This is Miguel, welcome to Information Security Newspaper. Remember we have uploaded almost a hundred videos in our channel, so I want to invite you to go and watch them. So today we're going to talk about ransomware and how to decrypt them, so let's get started. Hello guys, so today we're going to talk about a super genius malware reverse engineer. So he's called Michael Gillespie and well, he's considered by much one of the brightest minds inside the world of the malware reverse engineer. And thanks to that, that's why we call him Ransom Man. But first, let's start with, uh, well, let me tell you what is a malware so you understand the video. So, a malware is what is considered a malicious program that can block, steal, and copy all the information you have in your device, and it can spread to other connected devices by simply opening a malicious email. And well, a variant of malware is the famous ransomware, which is a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer system, or encrypt files, or threatens to publish the victim's data unless a ransom is paid. So Michael Gillespie is the brilliant mind that we are going to talk about. He is a young 27 years old malware reverse engineer who analyzes ransomware and has already created more than a hundred ransomware decryptor programs for victims. And well, I had a chance to talk to him and in this video I'm going to present my talk with him. But first, we're going to tell you more about him and a bit of his story and some interesting facts about him. So well, he started programming at the age of 13 years and at the age of 17 years when he was studying at Peking Community High School in Illinois. Once in his school, he was testing the school website and suddenly he discovered a vulnerability that exposed student personal information. And well, of course, he worked with the school to fix it. The high school professors mentioned that he was a really intellectual guy and he was really passionate for technology and computers. So that's why when he graduated in 2010, Jules P. was named an Illinois State Scholar based on his grades. And well, instead of going to college, he began working as a computer technician in Nerds and Coal Computer Repair Company. Well, a couple of years later, in October 2012, he got married with Morgan Blanche, who he knew since high school, and well, both are real pet lovers, and in their house, they live with a dog, a rabbit, and eight cats. So, during his five-year work period in Nerdson Call, Julius P. became a Swiss army knife due to his outstanding work and knowledge. That's why when a client was hit by the Tesla Crypt ransomware in 2015, USB was assigned to recover the files and of course he completed the task. And well, to prove his knowledge, he started working with Fabian Hossard, who is a malware researcher and who was also working to decrypt other ransomwares at that moment. And well, this is how his journey inside the world of ransomware began and soon he became one of the best malware reverse engineers in the world. So that's why our team created a small animation to represent him, because we actually consider him like a real life superhero. So in 2016, Jules P developed a website called ID Ransomware. Well, this is a place where victims can upload a ransomware encrypted file. And well, by simply bloating a ransom node or an encrypted file, the site can identify what ransomware may have affected you. The site also provides the current known status of the encryption in the data, along with a link to more information on the particular ransomware. So to help GLSP, some experts like Fabian Hosser, Lawrence Abrams, and a handful of other volunteers worldwide formed a group known as the Malware Hunter Team. So guys, so far, Gillespie has created more than a hundred 
decryptors code of ransomware, that's a lot. These decryptors have been downloaded more than 320,000 times. And well, you can find them available in many websites, of course, including his own ID ransomware. Thanks to his website, Michael Gillespie had helped a lot of users to recover their files, including private companies, public companies, and even the FBI, which uses this site a lot, since victims often don't report ransomware attacks. And guess what? In 2017, the FBI awarded Gillespie with the Community Leadership Award for his public service, devotion, and assistance to the ransomware victims in all the world, internationally talking, and of course in the United States. And well, we had the opportunity to interview Michael, and we're going to show it to you. Hey, Michael, let me introduce myself. Uh, well, my name is also Miguel in Spanish. I work at the International Institute of Cybersecurity. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. Really, we do appreciate this. Sure. So how was your day today? Uh, typical okay. work. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of that. So let me tell you uh, something. Well, the aim of this call is well to get to know you better, to get to know more about your work. And well, if you could please give us some advices of how users can protect against ransomware. Okay. Basically. So, um, you, you, I'm sorry, you said just kind of a brief, like a bio of myself. Well, we read a bit on the internet. Okay. <laughs> so that's why we contact you. We actually have a YouTube channel and we post a lot of um, cybersecurity news and that stuff. Okay. So, yep, my name is Michael Gillespie, and um, I'm a self-proclaimed ransomware hunter. <laughs> uh, yeah. Pretty much work a lot with uh, trying to break ransomwares and helping victims recover their files. Um, I mean, pretty much, you may have seen my quotes all over the place. The, I mean, the number one uh, way of pr protecting uh, against, like, losing data and such from ransomware is definitely backups. Um, I, I usually get questions on how to back up correctly and I usually recommend the, um, I think it's Backblaze has a uh, article on three, two, one backup scheme. It's kind of a overarching way of doing backups, making sure you have three locations or three copies of the data. Mm -hmm. Two of those are off site, And one of those is, um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting what the actual <laughs> specifics oh, of it are, but you, you know what I'm talking actually, about. Yeah, you did great. Like that was like the main advice here, right? Like to protect your data, make copies of the information. Yep, that's like the best one. But wait, I really like to know how the ID ransomware project started. Yeah, so um, back in 2016, 2015, when I was uh, you know working through helping victims uh, when I kind of got my feet wet with ransomware, with the Tesla crypt stuff that was in the story. Um, you know, it just became overwhelming where victims were just constantly hitting up the forum, creating new topics. And um, it was kind of becoming a bit of a mess because, you know, there wasn't a lot of coordinated effort to, uh, I mean, there, there was some coordinated effort from the moderators, but it was just overwhelming with how many people were, putting new topics out, kind of hijacking other people's talk topics. Um, you know, the, they just start out with, you know, Hey, my file, I can't open my files. They have this extension and here's the ransom note. And, you know, the moderators would have like a canned response for each ransomware. Um, if we were able to identify it, but of course it came to a point where there are so many that we were getting confused ourselves. And, um, I was definitely getting really confused. <laughs> so, yes. Um, yeah. So I decided to make a website that uh, kind of works almost like a like a database just for myself even, um, but also helps the general public in identifying the ransomware. Um, you know, it, it does a lot of behind the scenes work to properly identify and cross reference and try to not have false positives. Um, especially in the last few years, the ransomwares that keep mimicking each other has made it a really annoying task. <laughs> no. It's increasing a lot, right? There are hundreds of them right now. Yep. 
coming up on 800 that I can identify. Yeah, that's what we read. So one question here, like people tend to uh, shut everything down. Like the question is, should we restart a computer after a ransomware attack? Um, uh, it it kind of, I, I want to say it kind of depends on the user. Um, if like kind of if you just need a black and white answer for, you know, the, the typical user who's not tech literate, I want to say, mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say shut down the machine. Um, as for like restarting it, I definitely wouldn't do that until it's, uh, till someone who I, I guess knows what they're doing has taken a look at the machine, make sure it's clean, uh, mm -hmm. make sure the, the malware is not, you know, going to run and continue encrypting. Cause sometimes people might catch it early and it hasn't encrypted yeah. everything. Um, also some, some ransomware are very crappily programmed and they might encrypt multiple times. Um, so that can be a threat. <laughs> okay. So, well, we heard that some malwares, like if you restart a computer, they will work better. So definitely not restart a computer. That's true. So yep. what type of files, yeah, what type of files can people upload on your ID ransomware website? So the, <clears throat> excuse me. So the site asks for the victim to upload an encrypted file, just any any file. I recommend something not confidential, of course, um, even though it's encrypted and I probably can't decrypt it depending on the ransomware just to be safe, um, you know, like a sample picture or just something something in the downloads folder that's not confidential. Um, so any file that the ransomware actually encrypted and one of the ransom notes. Um, that way it can, uh, it, it does a lot of identification by, <clears throat> excuse me, not just the extension of the file, like, you know, if it has .abc, .xyz or something. Um, but I usually, I actually use regular expressions to more accurately um, tell, because, you know, some ransomware I've used, um, one example actually lately is .abc. If, you, if the victim just says, I have the extension .abc, that could be either Tesla Crypt. Um, I've seen a hidden tier variant that used that. And also, actually, there's a Dharma variant lately that uses .abc. .abc. But the entire file name, if it's Dharma, has like dash ID and it has an email address in it and such. So that's why I use, you know, more specific identifiers. But then it'll also check the file for any known file markers. Um, like if it leaves a certain hex code. Um, sometimes I have like custom file markers I have to look for, like Spora had a, had a CRC 32 signature in it. Um, and then it also checks the ransom note for like a known email address, a bit message address, Bitcoin, Tor URLs, uh, regular payment portal URLs, um, also checks for the, uh, the ransom note file name. And then also a couple of other cross references on um, like I have integration with uh, the ransomware tracker. Um, they have it's a it's another party that has uh, they, they keep a list of known control servers and sometimes those match up with the, the portal payment URLs. Um, so I I pull in from their feed with their permission to cross reference that sometimes. Okay, great. So that those are like the type of attacks, like extensions. But you know, we want to know what's the procedure, like what's the steps that users should follow after they are attacked. Sure. So uh, first off, is definitely quarantining the system. Whether that is just shutting it down, getting it off the network. Um, <clears throat> then I would say it's definitely you know more of your incident response uh, time, where you're investigating, you know how. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, interrupting cat. Simon. Uh, yeah, we heard that you are an animal lover. <laughs> yes. Since I'm not in the secluded office, I'm exposed to them all right now. <laughs> Fine. Um, so it's definitely important to quarantine the machine and assess the damage. You know, how, how, far, is, uh, how far did the ransomware get in encrypting? How much of your data is actually encrypted? And then, you know, start looking into, are your backups okay? Yeah. Um, you know, make sure no other machines are compromised and enc encrypting at the same time. Um, then as part of that process is definitely identifying the ransomware. 
Um, so that's where my plug for my website ID ransomware comes in by uploading an encrypted file in the ransom note. You can identify what the ransomware is, and then it gives you a link to information. Not only, not only is it useful for like, you know, see, uh, the, the first thing most victims are wanting to know is, can it be decrypted? Is there a free decryptor for it? And yeah. the, the site will give you a black and white answer in most cases. Except for if it, you know, there, there are some ransomware that are only decryptable in certain conditions. So it might say, you know, it's possible. Um, but the biggest thing is it gives you a link to more information for credible sources. You know, whether it be, a, you know, a, a blog from an antivirus vendor who who analyzed it and has information on it or, um, you know, some type of a, a blog or, a, you know, announcement from a, another company like Bleeping Computer or something. Um, cause those articles usually will also have more, you know, it has more information so you can kind of verify yourself. Like, yep, that looks like the note that I just uploaded. And also it sometimes will give you more insight into where it came from. Okay. Um, you know, if there, if the article says this usually comes from, you know, spam email or, okay. you know, someone compromised your server via RDP, then you kind of, it's kind of steers you in a direction of where to start, you know, continuing your investigations fine so you attach all that information maybe sometimes in some occasions you provide where the um ransomware came from right i i read that yep. so in case there's no decryptor available what negotiation process should they follow um if there is no known way of decrypting um then i would definitely recommend backing up the files um just in case in the future there are some rare cases where um you know couple years later, someone does find a way to break it or law enforcement actually caught someone and, you know, grabbed their keys. So that, I mean, that's definitely happened. A lot of cases, like for example, Gand Crab was the most recent one. Yeah. Um, that one was around for a couple of years. And, you know, as soon as uh, the, the police force and Europol stepped in and grabbed all the key servers, um, you know, a lot of people were able to restore their data um, yeah. that they'd been, you know, encrypt for like six months to a year. Um, so, you know, just go buy a terabyte hard drive and, you know, external hard drives, throw your encrypted data on there and stick it in the safe and forget about it. And just periodically <laughs> check the news. <laughs> yeah, that's totally true. And also we heard about the WannaCry, no? It also make a lot of mess there. Yeah, so and that one even more more so was a mess since it was, I'd kind of almost classify it as a wiper, really. It had no way of decrypting and they had... Uh, since they use the exact same Bitcoin address for every single victim, they had, the criminals had no way to verify who actually paid if they even were monitoring it. <laughs> it was huge, right? So, yeah. Michael, do you see yourself working in an important government position maybe due to your dedication and fame? Um, I don't quite know at this point. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've still been kind of getting used to the fame over the last few years. Of course, this the, this awesome. latest story kind of just extra was an extra it's push. <laughs> it's going to increase. Trust me, we're going to help you with it. So, how is the Malware Hunter team evolving? I mean, how can somebody be part of it? Um, I'm not sure in terms of the team itself. Um, it's actually the in terms of Malware Hunter team. I'm actually not like lead of that. That's kind of some other individuals. Um, I'm kind of just part of them, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting. It's an interesting relationship on how I'm. I'm on a lot of teams. <laughs> fine, fine. Well, you should be there. You're a real life superhero. Like you have done a lot for humanity. So how can somebody <laughs> contribute to this cause? Um. I mean, I, I, I guess you're kind of leading me to, I do have a donation link on my, on my website, ID ransomware. Um, I really don't push victims to donate. I, you know, especially if it's someone that I, you know, decrypted their files, I really try to push on them. Like, you know, if you're, well, you're wanting to give me $20, you can, you can afford to get a backup for $20. Actually. <laughs> I'd rather you invest that in, you know, sixty dollars a year for Carbonite, or you know, fifty dollars a year for Apple backup, or whatever cloud service you want to go with. They're all very affordable. Yeah, they're over there. Well, we we've seen that link, and actually, let's see if we can do something about it. So, how you find out that you have the perps and the skills to do programming? I mean, 
malware decryption tools, that's really huge. Yeah, um, I mean, I I just kind of jumped into it. I have a programming background since I was like 13. Um, so I kind of started young with just programming in general. Um, started out in web dev, still do that now. Um, but then, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, I actually started kind of looking into the reverse engineering. I'd say programming definitely helps. Um, I've kind of heard this from a lot of other map, like actual, I want to say professional malware analysts <laughs> who okay. took the traditional route. Um, so it, it usually, you know, cause you, you kind of do have to understand how a program works, like from the developer's end point in order to understand it when you're, you know, picking it apart and understanding why it's designed the way it is and how these functions work and how the windows environment like the api yeah. calls work and all that so you, you could say it was natural since the beginning um yeah i i feel yeah. like it was kind of a natural progression for me i still have quite a bit to learn um i definitely am still a beginner when it comes to actual reverse engineering and i also want to know about your youtube channel sure so uh my youtube channel uh, is basically um all the videos that I've posted on there in the last few years are actually reversing uh, ransomware. And nice. it's kind of a series that I've uh, I've called it basically ransomware analysis for beginners. So I start out from the very first video. I was extremely nervous as the first time I've recorded myself. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, you know, the, I mean, the first video is literally me just showing like my thought process. Like I don't get into too much technical stuff yet. I just kind of go over like, what's my, I've got this sample that I think is a piece of, of ransomware. You know, what, what's my thought process on what I want to do with it? I want to see what, you know, first off, I want to verify this sample is ransomware because sometimes, you know, victims don't always know they sometimes they you know they run a malware byte scan and they just give me a dump of everything it found um <laughs> so i have to verify that i'm actually looking at a ransomware make sure it actually encrypts files um kind of see what indicators i can identify it for with from my website you know does it leave an extension does it leave a file marker what's the ransom note look like um and then i kind of go into you know my thought process on how I, I start thinking about whether it can be decrypted. If I see like certain signs that look like it's kind of not programmed the best way or something like that. Um, and then from there, the series progresses into, uh, you know, some, some very basic ransomware with .NET, just reversing that or decompiling a Python ransomware, kind of looking at how the encryption algorithm works, how the key generation works. Um, I've got a video like analyzing some network traffic, seeing how it talks to a server to get the key. Um, I just recently started a mini series of that series, uh, analyzing the Stop DJ Vu ransomware specifically, since that one has been very prolific. And Fine. I have quite a bit to still record on that one. <laughs> There's a lot to talk, talk I'm about. I'm pretty sure you one. will be improving. You will be improving a lot. Yep. And, you know, like, I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of people have asked you this question before. I want to know, what motivates yourself to work without charging people? Just the challenge of it. Um, I get, I guess I get a kick whenever I break one. Um, actually, I just, I just worked on, um, I wrote a, another decryptor over my lunch break that's releasing tomorrow. Um, okay. <laughs> Because, I mean, you're like a, a real-life superhero. Have you seen the cartoons that are on over the internet? Uh, <laughs> Those are really cool, right? <laughs> yep, the ones that ProPublica had uh, had an artist do of me are very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it sounds interesting. So, hey, talking about the, uh, what just like just to finish, thank you so much. We, so we heard that you're an animal lover. Like, which is your favorite pet? Uh, you mean of my, of my, you're going to make me pick a favorite? <laughs> I don't know if you have one. I mean, I'm definitely a cat person, just through and through. Um, I've always grown up with cats, and my wife kind of turned into a cat lady, and that's how we acquired so many. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. That's pretty fun. I'm also a cat person. Well, Michael, I don't know if you have any question, like here over here. Uh, none I can think of. I'm always I'm like, always open for talking about ransomware. <laughs> well, we do really appreciate it. Like, thanks a lot for your time. 
And well, sure. we are going just to use this conversation for our blog and our YouTube channel, and well, just also to ask for donations, and we will send you the link. Are you fine with it? Okay. Well, well, that's pretty much everything, Michael. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you again. Alrighty. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye. He was really happy about our call, and we also appreciate his time. You know, Michael has decided not to cash in for his services. He mentioned that at this moment in life, he's not interested in money, even he knows that a huge amount of money is involved in these ransomwares. You know, Julius P and his wife Morgan had some economic issues. That's why Julius P asked for donations to support this project. And well, as you know, every year, millions of ransomware attacks cripple computer systems of individuals, business, government agencies, and even police departments. You know, often the files cannot be decrypted without paying a ransom. But those who have recovered their data without paying criminals frequently owe their escape to GLSP. So, buddies, that's why we wanted to show you a little bit of his history and his work to let you know there's a solution if you get infected by ransomware. So in case you or someone you know have used ID ransomware, we definitely would like to ask you to cooperate to this cause with donations directly in the website ID Ransomware. You know, I believe he is a great person and I'm pretty sure thousands owe him in a certain way. Also, in case you have any doubt or question regarding ransomware, you can email us at nomoransomware at iicybersecurity.com. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this video as I did. And once again, I would like to thank Michael Gillespie. Thanks for everything. See you in the next one.